Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs, and in this video we're going to look at analyzing a space truss using SOLIDWORKS simulation. And so you can see the, the simple truss we've got before us here. Uh, it doesn't have too many members there, they're all going to be truss elements, so a lot of these intersections you can think of as ball and socket joints, uh, which would create just a pure axial loading on the members itself, so you can think pure tension and compression there. And so a little bit of information here about a few joints, A, B, and C is where we're going to think of this uh, space truss being connected uh, to, say, uh, the ground or whatever's holding it here. And at joint A, you can see, is a fixed ball and socket joint. Uh, so that's this guy back here. Uh, joint B is a slotted roller joint, so it's going to allow motion in the Z direction, uh, but reaction forces in the X and Y. And so again, we're using this coordinate system here to give us some reference on what the X, Y, and Z directions are. And then joint C sitting off here toward the back, a planar roller joint, so it's basically a joint that's riding along in what would be the XZ plane uh, that's going to be able to create a Y reaction. As far as the actual loading goes, um, we're going to hang a 500 pound load off of joint E here in the Y direction. You can think of a Y, negative Y being the direction that we usually think of gravity there. And so with that being said, um, let's go ahead and hop right into SOLIDWORKS. Uh, SOLIDWORKS here, I've already got the structure drawn. Um, I've been using weldments, it appears. And we should be able to start the analysis. And so the first thing you'll want to do in order to do this type of analysis is make sure that you have SOLIDWORKS simulation loaded into your current session of SOLIDWORKS. And so the way I usually do that is I come right here next to the gear. I'm not clicking the gear, just the down arrow next to it. And I go to Add-ins. And I look to see if SOLIDWORKS simulation is currently added into this session of SOLIDWORKS. In this case, I'm using SOLIDWORKS 2016. Uh, you can see SOLIDWORKS simulation here. It's got the check on the left-hand side, which means it's added in uh, to this active session. And then I use SOLIDWORKS simulation enough that I also check it on the, the right-hand side here as well. So that way, um, when it starts up, every time I start up a session of SOLIDWORKS, it goes ahead and lad, loads in the, the SOLIDWORKS simulation module there. Yes, I spend a little bit more time uh, loading up, but so be it. And so first check, make sure you have SOLIDWORKS simulation loaded in. Uh, the second thing I was just doing is showing the simulation tab. And so right now, uh, my tabs are Feature, Sketch, Surfaces, Evaluate, and Analysis Prep. But I do not see simulation, so I'm going to right click on any of the tabs. And I'm going to come down through the context menu, and there's simulation right there. And so I'll go ahead and accept that, and you can see it pops up the simulation tab. So right now simulation is pretty bare because I haven't started a simulation, so the really only thing it wants me to do is start a simulation. So I will do that, to, and I'll click the down arrow here under Study Advisor, and I'm just going to go right into to New Study. For this type of analysis, so we'll just stick with the, the Static 1 type, and so or the Static Study. The default name is Static 1. Uh, if you want, you could change that to something like Space Trust Static Analysis or whatever you deem desirable, and accept that to start a study. And so you can see our simulation tab uh, has a lot more activity now. You can see all the different icons I have there. Uh, I've got this kind of split tree approach too, right? You've got the CAD modeling tree here, and then you've got the simulation tree down below. Now we're also in a new tab, which is titled the title of my study, in this case, Space Stress Statics Analysis. And so I'm just going to work my way down this tree structure. And so first thing I've got is something to do with the bodies, the bodies that make up my model. And so here you can see all the different bodies. If I go through them all, they should all highlight. And what I need to do is tell it what material these are, as well as tell it the type of element. And so first, I believe this is beam element. You kind of have that I-beam style cross section. And so I'm just going to hold shift down, select all those. And since I'm really thinking of this as a truss problem, I want to make sure that SOLIDWORKS uses truss elements for those. Uh, just a quick tidbit there. Um, this was created as a weldment geometry on the CAD side. So when I bring it into simulation, it's going to automatically default to beam elements there. And so then I'm basically modifying the beam element to become a truss element at this point. So I've got them all selected. I'm going to uh, then go to edit definition from a right click menu. Right now it's got beam elements, and I want to come down here and say, well, make these truss elements. It's got all of them selected, which is good, and then I'm going to hit OK. Uh, you'll see the icon changes. Now we don't have that little I-beam shape, but we kind of have this piece of angle shape here. And so that's indicating that these are all truss elements. 
And so next thing I'm going to do is apply some material. Uh, I think in this one I have something like A36 structural steel uh, for the, the material for this. And so I could go through each individual mineral and apply a material to the body. Or since this case, since they're all going to be the same, I'm going to right click and say apply material to all bodies. Once so that brings up the material properties dialog box, um, it's A36 structural steel that I'm looking for. There we go. You can see the table here with all of the material properties. And so I'll apply that, hit close, and now you can see the designation next to each one of these truss elements, the fact that it is A36 structural steel. So we're in good shape at this point, and so I think we're done with this node on my tree. Uh, next joint group, I'm going to right click and edit it, and I'm really just confirming that I have the right number of joints. This is where you have to be careful every once in a while, SOLIDWORKS will uh, have more joints than what you would expect. And so the joints are represented by these purple spheres, occurring at the intersections of these truss bodies. And so if I just look through the model, I've got one here, two here, three, four, and five. And that's exactly what it's saying, one, two, three, four, and five. And so in this case, the model looks okay in terms of joints. And so I'll just hit the green check mark. Yes, I'm okay with it recalculating because I haven't really done anything at this point. And so we're good to move forward. Uh, now, I don't really need any connections for this type of problem that I'm working, so I'll come down to fixtures. And so fixtures is all about how is this body held in space. And so for us, that was the information I had in the PDF about the, the fixtures, how joints A, B, and C are held in space. And so we'll right-click, we'll go to fixed geometry first, and then I can uh, select a few different things here. Uh, for each of these, I'm just going to use their use reference geometry. And so I've got to select the joint. And so first I'll start with this joint here. Uh, that joint 10-1, uh, that is joint A from my problem description. And joint A is supposed to be a fixed ball and socket joint. And so if you think about that, the fixed referring to the fact that it cannot translate in any direction. It can't move, by move I mean slide, in the X, Y, or Z direction. Uh, but it could rotate about those axes. It could rotate about the X, could rotate about the Y, could rotate about the Z. And so what I'm going to do is first select a reference plane and so for this I'll just select the the front plane and depending on what plane you pick here drives the interpretation of the combo boxes down below here in terms of translation and rotational degree of freedoms and so this point here uh, can either slide in three directions or tr rotate in three directions or about three directions I'll say and so first on the translations, we've got along plane direction 1, along plane direction 2, and normal to the plane. And so since I selected the front plane, and I'm using the combination of the front plane and this coordinate system here, uh, this icon says, will it translate in the X? This is translate in the Y, and then this is translate in the Z direction, again due to the fact that I have the front plane selected. In this case, I don't want it to translate at all, so I'm going to activate all these and leave it at 0. And so what this is saying that, hey, this is not going to allow a translation in the X, Y, or Z directions. On the rotation side of things, I'm going to leave it all grayed out, though, because I do not want it to rotate about any of these axes. Or, excuse me, I want it to be able to free to rotate about any of the axes. Uh, let me clarify, I guess. Um, when this thing happens, you're going to have the um, members stretching and compressing, depending on the member itself. And so the angles between the joints might change ever so slightly and so we want to be able to capture that change in angle with these rotations and so that's why I'm leaving these grayed out so I'm not imposing a spe specific um, angular displacement or no angular displacement in case of zero on that joint and so fixed ball and socket should look like this free to rotate however it wants but it cannot translate so there's that one and now we've got to work our way through the other two uh, joint B is a slotted roller joint which allows motion in the Z direction, but reactions in the X and Y. Okay. And so go back into SOLIDWORKS. Again, right-clicking the fixtures, I'm going to go fix geometry. Again, I'll use reference geometry. That's joint B right here. I'll go ahead and click the, the front view here. And now let's go back and see. Slotted roller joint which allows motion in the Z direction. So by allowing motion in the z-direction, I'm thinking it allows me to translate in the z-direction. And so that's going to be normal to the front plane that I've selected, so I'm going to leave this one grayed out. 
it's going to cause reactions in the x and y direction so I'm going to activate these and say hey this thing cannot translate in the x and y direction that's what those two boxes are representing a rotation side of things here it's a slotted roller joint I'm going to assume that it's basically uh, very similar to the ball and socket idea where I'm going to allow it to rotate in any of the three directions that it wants so I'll hit accept, or accept, accept, excuse me, and then one more. Go into fixed geometry. Use reference geometry again. Pick this last guy over here. Uh, let's read the description. Joint C is a planar roller joint, which creates a reaction in the y direction. And so in this case, I'm actually going to use the top plane. And so with the top plane here, uh, this is going to be something like the x. This would be something like the z. And this would definitely be the y because it's normal to the top plane. So it's going to create a reaction in the y direction. So this means that it's not going to be able to translate in that y direction. So we'll let off zero there. It could possibly slide in the x or z direction. So we'll leave those grayed out. And the same thing with rotation. I don't want to specify a specific angular displacement or no angular displacement. And so I'm leaving those not active. So that's looking good. And so basically what I've done at this point is translate my description of the fixtures into conditions at each of these joints using that reference geometry. Next we have loads. And so you can see there's lots of different types of loads. Uh, I'm just after a force. Here I can apply a force a few different ways to a vertice or a point, to a joint, or to a beam itself. And so I'm going to apply it at a joint. That joint was this guy out here. And if we scroll down, that was joint E, and it has 500 pounds in the negative Y direction. So we've got negative Y directly downward, 500 pounds force. And so here, we'll go ahead and change the units. Let's give it a plane to work with. I just selected the front plane, so again, I derive the interpretation of these based off my plane selection. And I'll select this right here, uh, it's nice on this one because it makes it pretty easy. You can see uh, the little purple arrow that popped up at the joint. Um, here I want it to go down instead of up, so I'll just flip it, and then I want it to be 500 pounds. Uh, same thing here, if I activate the one in the X direction, you can see I've got a, a separate little force there, uh, but I don't want that one, so I'll take it off. So 500 pounds, directed downward, looking good. Uh, so at this point, um, we're in pretty good shape. Got all our fixtures in, we've got our joints in. Now it's really ready to mesh and run. So I'm going to right click, I'll go ahead and create mesh. Should go very quickly uh, because this is truss elements. So if I go to mesh details here, you can see I've only got a total of nine elements here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, basically every one of those members that you're visually looking at is being modeled as a, a single element there. And so uh, that's why it's taking almost just instantaneous amount of time there, just very little, in order to create those joint or create those elements. Uh, after I've created the elements, I've meshed the model, I can now say run the study. You can hear the chime there. And again, very quickly it comes up with a solution. And so here it's showing a stress plot. You can see the deformed shape, the, the gray sketch lines are where it was. Now it's uh, deformed right about 402 for the scale, so it's quite grossly exaggerated here uh, to show those deformations. Uh, really I'm after the axial stress plot. So I'm going to right click on this and I'll go edit definition. You can see uh, there's a few different stress plots here. I just want the axial. I want it in PSI. And I'm just going to say show it in my true scale, not the deformed shape. So it now snaps back to uh, where I was at. Here we can even make it a little easier with the chart options here. Let's make it floating no decimals, values in PSI. So uh, that's looking uh, pretty good there. And so maybe you want to know what the stress is at each one of the individual members itself here. Uh, that's where you can actually probe the stress plot. And so if I probe the stress plot, I can right click on it and go to probe. And I can really just click on here element by element and see the stresses in the, the element itself here. And so I'm just going to take a moment to, to spot check make sure everything's looking good for us and everything looks pretty close to as expected therefore uh, this model 
And so that's how you can get a feel for the stresses in the member. If you wanted to look at displacements, you can do something like this. And you can say, hey, uh, this tip joint is going to have a displacement of not very much. It's 0.57, basically, millimeters. And so that's uh, quite small, especially compared to the over other lengths of the member itself. Uh, other things you can look at are the reaction forces. So uh, there's got to be some forces that are actually going to keep this thing held down. And so to access those, you go through Results Advisor. And I believe we can go to List Result Force. And here we have Reaction Forces. I want it to be in English units. It's waiting for me to pick some joints. Well, these three joints would be the one I'd be interested in uh, because those are the ones that I'm applying the fixtures to. Click Update, and then somewhat messy. So you can move these flags around, and there are the, the reaction forces that would be required in order to hold this thing in place. And so again, just taking a, a quick moment uh, to take a look at the reaction forces. Yes, uh, notice this guy's actually heading in the downward direction, right? You've got upward reaction forces in the y direction here, the positive y direction is actually being held down here, uh, which makes sense, right? You're going to have upward forces here. If this thing doesn't hold it down, this whole thing's going to rotate basically about this front edge, right, and be picked up and start rotating in the clockwise direction. But there's how to investigate the, the result forces on your model. And so hopefully this helps you with some space trust problems and getting used to SOLIDWORKS simulation. As always, thank you for watching the video.